So here we're going to go over odd numbered fatty acid beta oxidation. And before we jump into it, we need to understand that beta oxidation is the process in which we break down a fatty acid. Essentially, we oxidize our fatty acid to produce acetyl-CoA, which is going to go into the TCA cycle and then further produce ATP uh, through electron carriers such as NADH and FADH2. Now, when we talk about beta oxidation in general, in general, we when we go over it, we are doing even numbered fatty acids. Why is that? Because we have to think about this mathematically. Acetyl-CoA has two carbons. So if we have an even numbered fatty acid, we will end up with a perfect ratio of creating acetyl-CoA. So if we have a fatty acid that has 14 carbons and we break it down through beta oxidation, we are going to get seven acetyl-CoAs because each acetyl-CoA will have two carbons. Now, we face a problem when we have odd-numbered fatty acids because in odd-numbered fatty acids, when we are undergoing our final round of beta oxidation, that final product is going to have three carbons rather than two. So let's say we had a 15 carbon fatty acid and we break it down via beta oxidation. In the final round of beta oxidation, it's gonna be left with three carbons and this three carbon molecule is going to be called propionyl-CoA. And here we're gonna go over odd numbered beta oxidation and how we break down propionyl-CoA. So once again, we start off with our fatty acid. We can note that this is just a general depiction of a fatty acid. We have our carboxylic group and we have this R notation, which simply tells us that we have an arbitrary number of carbons. We could have five, 10, 12, however many it may be. This is just a general depiction of our fatty acid. Now, when our fatty acid combines with the coenzyme A, we get fatty acyl-CoA, and this is the activation step of our fatty acid before it can undergo beta oxidation. So after it has been activated, it has that coenzyme A group attached, it's going to enter the mitochondrial matrix for beta oxidation. Now, before we even jump into beta oxidation, where do fatty acids come from? They come from our lipids. This is just a general structure of what a uh, lipid could look like. This is a triacylglycerol. And we break down lipids through enzymes known as lipases, and we get our products of glycerol and fatty acids. Now, fatty acids are chains. Remember, they're made up of carbon and hydrogen, and we have our carboxylic group. And then we have glycerol, which is going to be broken down in a separate pathway, also for energy. Now, in the first step of beta oxidation, we can note we have our activated fatty acid. We've got our coenzyme A group, we've got that carbonyl, we have that R notation representing there may be a given number of carbons at the end. And the reason why it's called beta oxidation is because we are manipulating the beta carbon. So we've got this carbonyl over here, and then this is referred to as our alpha carbon, and this is our beta carbon. We're going to be manipulating this carbon over here. So here we have our acyl-CoA, and what we're going to do is we're going to oxidize our acyl-CoA, and in return, we're going to reduce FAD into FADH2. Now, this step is performed by the enzyme acyl-CoA dehydrogenase. We can remember that uh, a dehydrogenase is involved because whenever we have an FAD or an NAD, oftentimes it is a dehydrogenase enzyme. This oxidation reduction step gives us a double bond between the alpha and beta carbon, giving us trans delta 2 enol CoA. This step of creating that double bond is really important because in the next step, we are going to be hydrating. And we hydrate through a hydratase enzyme, referred to as enol CoA hydratase. This hydration step allows for the introduction of this hydroxyl right over here on that beta carbon. This is really important. Because now that we've introduced that hydroxyl, what we can now do is we can oxidize this over here and give us a carbonyl. Now, this step um, is catalyzed also by a dehydrogenase enzyme because we are going from NAD to NADH. We are reducing NAD and in return we are oxidizing uh, hydroxyacyl-CoA and getting that carbonyl. 
getting this carbonyl is really important because now what we can do is we can break off this structure over here and this is going to be our acetyl coa and now we are going to go further into breaking down this portion of the fatty acid now this process of starting off with this single bond introducing a double bond and then introducing a hydroxyl via hydration step and then creating a carbonyl this process is a very common uh, mechanism within biochemistry and we can see its importance so in the next step what we do is we use a thiolase enzyme and we introduce a coenzyme a group and as a result our product we get acetyl coa which is coming from right over here and then we have the remaining fatty acid that's left over and this coenzyme a over here is now attached to the new carbonyl that we created so this is the carbon this was our original beta carbon and we introduced a coenzyme a group and now we have our acyl coa which is two carbons shorter now this process so far is same is the same as regular beta oxidation but remember, the problem we face now is at the very end of beta oxidation, that final round, we are going to end up with three carbons rather than two to produce acetyl-CoA. Now that three carbon molecule, we refer to it as propionyl-CoA. And what we do with this propionyl-CoA, we can see that this is our coenzyme A group, we've got our carbonyl, and this is essentially the extra carbon that we have. So we use an enzyme known as propionyl coa carboxylase and use biotin as a cofactor and we convert it into demethylmalonyl coa and this step is really important because it requires atp and it's going to be broken down into adp and inorganic phosphate as the energy source for this reaction and we are introducing a bicarbonate now we introduce this bicarbonate and as a result we get this structure of c double bond o and oxygen that is introduced to our propionyl CoA. It's really important to understand the mechanism, and there is a separate video on the mechanism of propionyl CoA carboxylase to see exactly how the bicarbonate um, is helpful in this reaction to introduce the structure over here. But regardless, we get demethylmalonyl CoA. In the next step, we use an epimerase, which is going to be an isomerization reaction in which we are going to convert D-methylmalonyl-CoA into L-methylmalonyl-CoA. After we get L-methylmalonyl-CoA, we can actually just note that this was just a switch between this oxygen over here and the coenzyme A groups. So we have isomerized it into L-methylmalonyl-CoA. And in our final step, we are going to use a mutase, which is actually just going to transfer a functional group on our L-methylmalonyl-CoA. And we see the transfer of this structure over here right to over here. So we see a switch in place. So the mutase moves a functional group and it uses coenzyme uh, B12 to facilitate this reaction. And there is also a separate video on how uh, coenzyme B12 actually works uh, when it comes to moving functional groups. So in our final uh, step, we produced succinyl CoA. Now this succinyl CoA, we can actually recall, is one of the intermediates in the TCA or the citric acid cycle. So this succinyl CoA will go on to complete uh, the citric acid cycle, and as a result, uh, ATP will be produced through the electron carriers FADH2 and NADH will which go on to the electron transport chain. So what's really important to understand is when we deal with odd numbered fatty acids, we end up with a, when the final round of beta oxidation, we end up with three carbons. And those three carbons are going to be referred to as propionyl CoA. And we have these series of steps which give us succinyl CoA. Now, the succinyl CoA is a TCA intermediate and it will go on to the citric acid cycle and uh, go on to produce FADH2 and NADH, which will go on to the electron transport chain and produce ATP through oxidative phosphorylation. And that is essentially how we break down odd numbered fatty acids. It follows regular beta oxidation until the final round of beta oxidation.